welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Amber and I run the fashion blog, The Cocoa Butter Diary. In today's video, we will be talking about luxury for beginners. So we're going back to basics. But before we get into this video, if you could please like it and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And also hit that notification bell so that you never miss an upload on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now, like I said, we will be talking about luxury for beginners today. Luxury is a relative term. First of all, how do you define luxury? Uh, to some people, uh, Michael Kors is considered luxury or Coach is considered luxury. But for me, luxury, in my opinion, is Chanel, Dior, Hermes, like what we consider high-end luxury brands. But before we get into the items that I feel like are worthy luxury investments based on price, I think we need to also define what a luxury investment piece is. Besides price, brand, and style, I think there are three other elements as well that constitute a luxury investment. Versatility, quality, and cost per wear. A luxury investment should be something that is versatile, meaning that you're going to get a lot of use out of it. It's something that you probably would wear every day, if not almost every day. When it comes to quality, not every item within a luxury brand is created equal. Just because it's Saint Laurent or it's Chanel doesn't mean that the quality is up to par across the board. There are certain items that some people avoid from certain luxury brands because they feel like the quality isn't up to stuff. And that's perfectly okay too. And as far as cost per wear, again, that goes back into how often you're going to wear it so that you're essentially getting your money's worth. My first foray into luxury was about 10 years ago. When I was a little girl, my mom had a Speedy 30 in monogram canvas and I adored that bag. I thought it was so chic and so luxurious that I told myself when I grew up and I got my first big girl job that I would buy myself one. So right before my 25th birthday, I got my first big girl job with a nice salary and I could afford to buy my first Louis Vuitton bag. So sure enough, I went to the Louis Vuitton boutique and I tried out a Speedy 30. I wasn't sure if the Speedy 30 was for me because I'm a very petite person and that bag on my frame just seemed a little big. So I ended up getting a Speedy 25 instead. At the time, my Speedy 25 was $675. That same bag retails for $1,140 today. So with price increases, it's almost double what I paid for it. But even though I don't carry that bag anymore because I've kind of outgrown it, I still have it. And the reason why I still have it is because I could never bring myself to sell it. It was such an accomplishment for me to be able to afford that bag that even though I don't carry it anymore, I could just never bring myself to let it go. So instead, I had my Speedy 25 painted. I solicited a brand on Instagram. I forgot what brand it is. If I do remember, I'll put it in the description box below. I had my Speedy 25 painted so that it would be a showpiece in my closet. Um, one of my favorite brands is Celine. I'm a huge philophile. So I wanted the writing to mimic Celine's writing at the time. And then I had Self Made and The City to illustrate how my love for the Bay Area never wavers, painted on the bag. So this is her. You can tell that she really is 10 years old because look at the patina on my handles. At one point, I carried this bag daily. This was my, this was my purse. So you can see the patina. I still have my lock, um, but the bag is overall is in pretty good condition. And the thing about the monogram canvas is that the patina 
is actually a sign of the vintage. So it's actually a good thing. So I wouldn't shy away from bags that have patina. It doesn't mean that it's dirty. It's just the natural process of the leather curing and aging over time. I also feel that it's important to talk about how to obtain luxury investment pieces without paying full price. Now, there are several ways that you can do that. You can either wait for it to go on sale um, using apps like Shop Tagger and Honey to see if there's any coupon codes or when there's a discount on an item that you save in the app. Or if you're on a desktop, they have a plugin where it keeps track of items that you've saved that you're looking for a discount on. Or you can look secondhand or pre-loved. Some of my favorite pre-loved sites that I have shopped at personally are The Real Real, Fashion File, and Poshmark. There's tons of others out there, you know, Bestier, Trade Z. Some people have even had luck on eBay. But for me, those are the three that I have personally purchased from. The Real Real, I mostly go to for shoes. Um, I tend to find a lot of the shoes that I'm looking for that are no longer made in my size on there. So it's really helpful for that. I found my Balenciaga over the knee knife boots that I had been looking for in like new condition with the box and the dust bag for about 60% less than what they cost retail. So I made out like a bandit on those and I love those boots. Some items that I have purchased on Fashion File, I've purchased a vintage YSL kebab bag back in 2016. And the best part about Fashion File, the thing that I love the most about it, is that they have layaway. So if you're a girl on a budget and you want that luxury handbag or pair of shoes, give them a try because they have their reserve program, which allows you to put 25% down to secure the item. And then you have 60 days to pay the remainder of the balance. I really like Fashion File for that because I didn't always have it in my budget to just drop two stacks on a bag at once. So being able to pay for it over time and get a bag that's either in excellent condition or sometimes even like new was really helpful to me when I was starting out my luxury collection. When it comes to luxury items that are investment pieces that are under $500, more than likely it's going to be SLGs, which are small leather goods and jewelry. SLGs are a great way to kind of get that luxury fix without breaking the bank. Most card holders, which fall into the SLG category, are usually $400 or less. I personally own this YSL monogram card holder, and it retails for $275. I've had this card holder for about four years now. It's a great card holder. It holds four cards, and there is a slip pocket near the top where you could slip in maybe a couple of bills or maybe a receipt or something like that. But as far as a card holder goes, she's sleek, she's simple, and she gets the job done. And they also make this card holder in both gold and silver hardware in all the colors. The next items that would fall into this category would be Chanel brooches. Now, I will caveat and say that not all Chanel brooches are priced under $500. With Chanel brooches, it depends on the fabrications and if there's pearls or straw stones, etc. that are placed in the brooch that determine ultimately what it's priced at. If you tend to lean towards the plain solid gold ones without any embellishments, those tend to be the ones that are under $500. And also, again, if you go onto the secondhand or vintage market, then usually the vintage brooches are also under $500. The one that you see me wear the most, which is my Strauss brooch, which is also a signature collection Chanel brooch. They make that one all the time. This one I purchased in 2017. It was my first brooch. It was $550 at the time, and now it's $625. Now this bracket is gonna be a little bit more broad because we have a little bit more wiggle room here as far as what stuff fits. So it's not quite bags yet, unless you're leaning towards certain brands like uh, Mansour Gavriel and the like, but we can put some shoes in here, which is great. The first pair of shoes that I feel that's worth the investment in this category is the Acne Studios Jensen boot. 
these boots are absolutely fantastic. They're just a low heel, pointed toe, sleek boot that retails for $540. They come in smooth leather, they come in pebbled leather, very comfortable, easy to wear. They're like my workhorse boot. Um, I bought my pair in 2016. I still have them, still love them. I don't wear them as much as I used to. I really should break them out again because they're just so good. Uh, just a well-made workhorse of a boot. If you're just looking for a comfortable Chelsea boot that is minimalistic in fashion, but then you know you're going to get your cost per wear, it's a great boot to get. The next shoes that are on this list, you either love them or you hate them. They're the Gucci Prince Town Mules. It's an unpopular opinion. I love them. I have four pairs. <laughs> I have two pairs without the fur in the leather, and then I have two pairs with the fur. The ones with the fur are the ones that I tend to wear the most. The ones that are just leather and don't have fur in them retail for $695, which to some people is quite expensive, but I will say once you buy them, you will understand the hype. Like at first it was like, I don't get it. I don't understand why people are so obsessed with these, especially because the fur line ones came out first. I was just like, what's the point? But when you put them on, it's a vibe. They're so comfortable. They're so easy to break in. They literally come in all the colors and the designs. Like there's one for everyone. And once you buy one, you literally can't stop. That's why I have four pairs now. You get what I'm saying? Another pair of Gucci shoes that I love are the Jordan loafers. The Jordan loafers don't get as much fanfare as the Princetown mules, but they definitely get the job done. Both of my Jordan loafers are in velvet. I have a solid red pair, and then I also have a black pair embossed with um, the Gigi logos all over it. I wear these loafers mostly to work because they're extremely comfortable. I don't know if it's because I have velvet ones that they're so comfortable, but they are. And I will say that the size difference between the Prince Towns and the Jordans is substantial. I had to go a half size up from my mules in the Jordan loafers. So in my mules, I have a six and in my loafers, I have a six and a half. I don't know why, but they're essentially the same shoe. It's just one has an open back and the other one doesn't. But one shoe I wear a six, the other one I wear a six and a half. So keep that in mind if you are looking to buy some. Another luxury investment piece that I feel like is worth the coin is an Hermes belt. I just got mine in 2020 and I don't know why it took me so long to get one. First of all, it's reversible. So you get a gold side, which is their brown again, and you get the black side. So I essentially got two belts in one. And then you get to actually pick your buckle. So you can either do the guilloche H, which is the typical Hermes belt that you see everyone wearing, or you can do like mine, which is the Martelet buckle, where you can actually see the hammer imprints in the buckle. Uh, the possibilities are endless, and you can also do palladium, or you could do gold. Some of them, I believe, even come in rose gold. It's up to you. And because you buy the strap and the buckle separate, you can always just get more buckles. Like if you all of a sudden want a silver buckle to go with your same belt, you can do that. It's fine because it, com it comes right off. So you don't even have to buy like a whole another belt to get another buckle. So I think Hermes was smart by doing that. The belts retail for $890. So yeah, she's quite pricey, but I think she's worth it. Uh, I use mine mostly as a high-waisted belt to kind of cinch in like a cape or to uh, accentuate my, my waist when I'm wearing a certain type of dress or a certain type of sweater. But then I also do use it as a regular schmegular belt when I feel like my outfit needs a belt. I'm not really an everyday belt person, but I have a good belt when I do need one. Next on the list, the Hermes Oran sandal. Oh my God, the best. Uh, I bought my first pair of Oran sandals in 2018 for my birthday. I got them in white because it was summer. Everybody likes white shoes, white toenail polish in the summer because, you know, we're all nice and tan and everything and white just pops on us. 
So I got my first pair in white. I have worn them to death. <laughs> to the point where I might have to get another pair because <laughs> they're kind of no longer white, if you know what I mean, because I wear them so much. But last year, I also added a black pair to my collection and I couldn't be happier. The Oran sandals retail for $630, so it's a great entry-level piece into Hermes as it's one of the more least expensive ready-to-wear items. And the leather is just like butter. It conforms to your feet. They are extremely comfortable. And once you get a pair, you'll, you'll get it. Like you'll understand what the hype is about these sandals and why everybody and their mother and their brother has them because they're that good. And they're very understated, just a gorgeous sandal. And you need to buy them in the off season because once the weather starts to warm up, they're almost always sold out. So if you're gonna get a pair, get them now. That's just a little advice for me to you. The next shoe on this list is for the girls who still have to go to the office. It's the Manolo Blahnik BB Pump. She's not flashy, but she gets the job done. They're, the BB Pump is extremely comfortable. They come in all the colors. They come in both suede and leather, and you can pick your heel height. They have kitten heels and stilettos. I personally own the 105 millimeters because I'm a stiletto girl, can't help it. And I absolutely love them. I have them in white leather and black suede. Even though I don't really work in an office environment anymore, they're the perfect walk around stand pump. So if you need a pair of shoes that you can be able to walk in all day or stand in all day if you have to, these are it. Don't buy Louboutins for that. Get you a pair of Manolos and just call it a day. The next shoe is the Chanel Espadrille. I purchased my first pair of Chanel Espadrilles in 2013. At the time, they were extremely difficult to get. <laughs> like you had to be on a wait list <laughs> and hope that, you know, your name got called kind of thing. Now they're a little bit easier to come by because they're very popular and Chanel comes out with about four or five colorways per season because the girls love them. They start out at about $725. Uh, those are usually the tweed ones, um, but they also make some in all leather and those tend to cost a little bit more because again, they're all leather. Um, I have three pairs. I have a beige and black pair because it's quintessential Chanel. I have an all black leather pair. And then I also have a black lace pair with a black patent cap toe. <laughs> They're extremely comfortable. I absolutely love them. I will never get rid of my Chanel espadrilles. It's like that perfect, like I wanna wear sneakers, but then I wanna look cute and dressed up kind of shoe. And then also because I have narrow feet, they're one of the few espadrille shoes that are made by a brand that actually fit me because some of the other espadrilles that are on the uh, lower price point are too wide and I have like a big gap on the sides and that's not cute. This shoe is also a controversial pick, but I'm going to put it on my list because I do what I want. It is the Christian Louboutin So Cake Pump. Hear me out. They're the perfect pump in every way. They're not comfortable because that's not what Louboutins are for. They're meant to be sit down somewhere and look cute shoes. So just throw that out the window because it's unreasonable. But from a shoe enthusiast standpoint, they're literal art. The vamp, the toe box, the stiletto, just everything about that shoe is perfect. And I happen to love stilettos more than anything. So of course I got some. <laughs> I have them in patent leather. I have them in suede. I have them in regular leather. I also have the ankle boot, which is no longer made. Louboutins aren't for everyone though, um, especially the so cake because it's 120 millimeters. So that means it's about a four and a half inch heel. If you want a more reasonable <laughs> and comfortable, Louboutin pump, I suggest going for the Pagali, which comes in a hundred millimeter. Pagalis and so Kates almost look the same, even though, you know, the heel is slightly lower. The toe box is almost identical. But if you just want a Louboutin that you know you're going to wear, 
get the Pagali. Also, if you are not a heels girl, do not waste your money on a pair of Louboutin heels. Louboutin makes more than stilettos. They make sneakers, they make flats, they make kitten heels, they make boots with lower heels. Like you can get a pair of Louboutins that actually fits your lifestyle. I've heard so many stories about my feet are too wide or I don't even wear heels and I feel like I wasted my money because they're just sitting in my closet. Don't buy the heels if you're not gonna wear them. Just because you want the look or you just wanna be like, oh, I got some red bottoms, don't do it. You're investing in them because you know you're going to wear them. That's the point. The next item in this category of under $1,500 is a Chanel foam card holder. Now, even though this is an SLG, because of its size, it falls into this category. Because Chanel, based on the size of their SLGs, that determines what the price is. My Chanel card holder retailed for $800. It does fit my iPhone 11 Pro. It fits some cash. It actually fits cash lengthwise, so you don't even have to fold it. Some receipts, and then it has five card slots on the back. And if you double up like me, you can fit 10. I have gotten so much use out of mine since I bought it in July. It's not even funny. It's already paid for itself. It's perfect for me because again, if it's my phone in the front, I have my cash, I have my cards. It's essentially a purse without me having to carry a purse. So if I just need to just run a quick errand to the grocery store, or I just don't feel like carrying a purse, I have this, it's perfect. So it's already paid for itself. The next item we're going back to shoes is the Stuart Weitzman Highland over the knee boot. Now these are a little basic for some of you, but hear me out. These boots are fantastic. They are worth the money. I bought my first pair in 2015 when I moved to New York because I figured I was gonna be in a climate where I was gonna need some really good over the knee boots to get me through fall and winter that I decided to splurge on a pair. I got my pair in taupe. I don't even think they make taupe anymore, at least in the color that I have, but that's neither here nor there. I bought mine in taupe and they have more than paid for themselves. I still have them six years later and I still wear them. They're that good. They retail for $795. They've pretty much been the same price the entire time. They haven't had any price increases, which is good. The taupe color is perfect because I could wear it with both brown and black outfits. They worked perfectly under dresses. They worked over pants. They're fantastic. And I love them so much that in 2018, I bought a pair in black suede. <laughs> I know all the Instagram girls wear these boots or even like dupes or knockoffs of these boots, but they're that good. So if you can get them, get them. They almost never go on sale though, especially in like the black and the taupe color. It's very rare that Stuart Weitzman has a sale on these boots. Sometimes they do go on sale at like Saks during like friends and family. They'll be like 25% off. So if you can catch them, get them. The last item in the under $1,500 category is this Hermes CDC 24 cuff. It retails for $730 and it's the perfect everyday Hermes bracelet. I love that Hermes came out with this design because it's more sleek and minimalist to wear every day compared to the original CDC cuff. And I do wear mine almost every day because again, I wear black all the time. Mine is black. It just goes with everything. <laughs> so I've definitely gotten my money's worth since I bought this bracelet in October. And I already have my eye on another one. I think it's great to invest in everyday jewelry that you can wear with your outfit so that you really feel like you're getting your money's worth. So if that means a ring or a nice necklace or even a bracelet like this one, I'd say go for it because if you know you're going to wear it almost every day, then you're definitely going to get your money's worth. Moving on to the under $3,000 category. So now that we've gotten a little bit higher up, we can add some nicer things like ready to wear and bags. The first item that I feel is worth the investment in this category is a Burberry trench coat. I personally own the Burberry Sandringham trench coat. 
that particular silhouette is no longer made. It's been rebranded and redesigned to be the Chelsea trench coat. Both of these designs retail for $19.90. And they're the mid-length, so they hit at right about your knee. I love the Burberry Trench because it's iconic and it's classic. I'm kind of busy right now. Do you want to sit with me? Come on. <laughs> I'm kind of busy, but you can sit with me and say hi to YouTube, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so for the rest of the video, Dexter will be joining us. If you don't know, Dexter is my 10-year-old miniature schnauzer who loves attention. So here he is. As someone who lives in the San Francisco Bay Area, where we have a pretty temperate climate year-round, the trench coat is a perfect luxury investment piece to have in your closet. Because there are days where it is too cold to not wear a jacket, but then there are days where it's too warm to wear a wool coat. So the trench coat is perfect for that. But then also it's a raincoat. So anytime you encounter inclement weather and you don't want to ruin your wool coats, the trench coat is perfect for those occasions. Another luxury ready to wear item that falls into this category that I feel is worth the investment is a Balmain blazer. As someone who wears blazers with just about everything because I'm a jeans and a t-shirt person, the Balmain blazer was a no brainer as far as an investment. I live in black blazers, so having a really good one was definitely high on my list. Of course, I started with an express blazer when I was first starting out. Then I got a nice boyfriend one from Zadig and Voltaire when I was working there, and I wore it to work almost every day because we had to wear black as part of our uniform. And then when I started to wear out the Zadig one, I realized it would be a good time for me to invest in a Balmain blazer shoulders the way that they're structured was perfect i love how tapered the waist is it's double breasted it's just iconic in every way it does retail for 2295 dollars, so it is a splurge but it's definitely worth it in my opinion uh, sometimes you can catch them on sale usually not the black because the black is the most iconic and most requested and they make it all the time but if you're willing to compromise with maybe a more seasonal color or a seasonal silhouette then you may be able to catch it on sale during a designer edit next up we have our first bag that makes the list it is the prada re-edition 2005 in safiano leather it retails for 1950 dollars Y'all already know how much I love this bag. I did a full bag review on my channel a few weeks ago. I'll link it in the in the description box if you want to see it. We don't need to talk about it anymore, why it's worth it. So we're just going to leave it at that. Next up is my Dior book tote. I have already done a bag review on how much I love my gray oblique book tote named Colette. So we don't need to go into it here. It retails for $2,900. It's worth it. And if you don't believe me, go watch my bag review and see how hard it was for me to get it and you'll realize how worth it, it was to me. So again, I'll just leave it at that. Another bag that I own that falls into this category is my vintage Chanel Diana flap. I found my Diana flap in very good condition on Poshmark. Uh, the seller had it listed at $2,500. The great thing about Poshmark is that if it's an item that's over $500, they will authenticate it for you. And the seller does not receive the funds until it's been authenticated and it's been received by you. So when I decided to get my Chanel Diana flap, I felt like I was making a secure purchase by going through Poshmark. The bag arrived, it was in the condition that they said it was. It got here pretty quickly and I'm really happy with my purchase. The last item on the under $3,000 category is a Hermes watch. I personally own the 17 millimeter Hermes H watch with gold hardware and a black leather strap. I absolutely love this watch. It's my everyday watch, so I wear it every single day. <laughs> the only time where I don't wear it is when I'm working out because then I swap it for my Apple watch so that I can keep track of my calories. I absolutely adore this watch. It's minimalist, so chic and classic, and it's just an understated luxury item to kind of wear every day. And Hermes watches are 
extremely well made. The quality and the craftsmanship, you can't go wrong. The leather is smooth as butter and I'm very happy with my watch. I bought mine in 2018, so I've had it for about two years now and I still love it. And when I put it on every day, I still am in awe at how beautiful the watch is. The final category is the over $3,000 range. Now in this category, it's mostly Chanel bags. I'm just gonna caveat with that. Because when it comes to luxury investment pieces, as far as bags are concerned, you want bags that if worst case scenario, you have to sell them, you're gonna get what you paid for, if not more. And Chanel and Hermes tend to be the only bags that really fall into that category. And since I don't own any Hermes bags yet, yet, most of this category is going to be Chanel. <sighs> Chanel went a little crazy with the price increases last year. And now the bags, as far as buying them retail, have become almost absurd as far as their price. For example, a small flap, a small classic flap is now $5,800. A medium flap is $6,500. And a jumbo is $7,100. Last year in February, when I bought my medium flap in caviar leather at the Chanel boutique inside of Saks, it was $5,800. So it's gone up $700 in a year. Wow. <laughs> Chanel be wild. But the Chanel bags are still quintessential. They're still iconic. If you do need to sell it for any reason, you know you'll pretty much get what you paid for it, if not more, depending on what condition it's in. So it's a worthwhile investment. If you have the means to be able to walk into a Chanel boutique and buy one retail and walk out, that's awesome. But it's not for everyone. You can find a lot of Chanel inventory on the secondhand sites that I mentioned. Uh, Fashion File has a ton, uh, Poshmark has a ton, The Real Real has a ton, or even uh, joining like Facebook Reetsy groups and things like that. You can find really good deals on uh, Chanel bags. There's, there's ways around having to pay retail for one. But if you have your heart set on having the experience of buying a Chanel bag at a boutique, the caviar bags are made all the time. Take your time, save your coins, and when you're ready, go into the boutique, drop those stacks, and walk out with your bag. There's nothing wrong with it. Another bag that I feel like from Chanel that really doesn't get the love and affection she truly deserves is the boy bag. The boy bag was kind of controversial when it came out. Like everybody's like, oh, I don't know if I like the design. The sizes are weird. It's so square. The chain is ugly. Like because it was so casual, a lot of people didn't like the boy bags when they first came out. But it's a great bag. It's a great casual slash dressy Chanel bag. Like I would consider a Chanel classic flap to kind of be like, the bag you know you would inherit from your grandmother because it's very mature and it's very like dressy and classy in that sense the sh the boy bag is more like the cool auntie like that you know likes to have nice stuff but then isn't super fussy about it now boy bags still are cheap the cheapest boy bag as far as the medium size which is the size that i had at one point it was five thousand dollars i had a gray one with gold hardware and i absolutely loved it but i didn't carry it enough to really warrant keeping it. So I sold it so that that money could go towards me getting another flap. But if you want a Chanel bag without the muss and fuss of having a caviar flap bag, and it's a little bit cheaper, then I suggest going the boy bag route because they're actually really, really cute. And then the last bag that I would suggest is worth the above $3,000 price tag is the 19 bag. Again, I did another bag review of my small 19 in denim. I adore that bag. I want another one. I just love how casual chic she is. You know, she's unstructured, but then still kind of structured. She's low maintenance. 
Like I think of her as like the millennial Chanel bag. So if you're looking for a Chanel bag that's not too much muss and fuss, I would say go the 19 route. So that is it for my luxury for beginners and what items I feel like are great investment pieces for their price. I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel. I would really, really appreciate it. And if you could also give it a like so that more people can see it, that would be awesome too. This list was very opinion based. So I want to know if you agree or disagree with the items that I mentioned here, or if there was anything that I left out, uh, let me know in the comments. Let's have a little bit of a discussion of what you think constitutes a good luxury investment. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.